Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is the first part of a two part series where we will analyze the agent Tesla malware. As you can hear, I'm still suffering from a cold. So we will try to keep this part short and sweet. In this video, I will show you how to extract the final payload from the initial agent Tesla dropper. The final payload is hidden behind multiple layers of obfuscation. We will need the assistance of DN Spy and DE4 Dot in this adventure. So let's dive in. So here I am in my virtual machine. I have this folder called Agent Tesla in it. I have the Tesla.bin file. I will drag and drop this in PE Studio. Now PE Studio quickly picks up the details and tells us that, you know, this is Agent Tesla and the version, the file type is an executable. The file name is LBLD or whatever. And I know for a fact that it has been developed in Microsoft.net and we can see it here as well. Okay, so we will open this file now in DNSpy. Indian spy and drag and drop this file inside Indian spy. Okay, in Indian spy, we can see very quickly that there is a main method. I will click on this main method. In this main method, we can see the normal .NET related items, right? The creation of an application, initialize component, and an application is being run. In the initialize component, we can see that a main window is being created. And when we go to the main window, we can see in the constructor of the main window, a secure object is getting created. And some parameters are being passed to it. If you go and look at these parameters, these are some static strings, U, X, S, K, R, and G, E, S. Let's go back. Now we can go and look at the secure class, secure one class. If we go to the secure one class in the constructor, we see that this function is being called this dot rate. And if we go to this function, we can see that this has some interesting items. There is a convert from base 64 string here. There is a string replace function here. This method correct marks is there. We can go to this method correct marks. And if you go to this, we can see that it is basically reversing any string that is being passed to it. And we can see here DAOL, which when we reverse it, it's called, it will be translated to load. So basically what it's trying to do is that an array is being created from the resources WPF. If we go here, to the resources. We have a resource called WPF here. And this most likely is a base 64 string, which has a lot of star dollar and hash. We go back to the secure one class. We can see that star dollar and hash are being replaced by a. So I think it's fairly clear that a base 64 string is being created and then it is being reversed here using this method correct marks and from there an ex executable or an assembly is getting created and that assembly is being loaded and we can see from that assembly there is going to be a class android class and the method that is getting called is start game and here we can see that it is being invoked and an object of IO is being passed to it. So let's put a breakpoint here and see what is going on. I can run this. Yes. Now we've reached here. I will step over. The array is now created. We can see the array here and let me try to open it. If we see here 4D5A, 
4D, 5A is basically 4D is M and 5A is Z, which is MZ. So this means that this is an executable. So let me save this as stage 2.bin. From the looks of it, we can see here that this function is calling the class which is inside this assembly and it's starting this method and an object is being passed to it. Now, if we see that this stage 2 is a DLL, we can basically start running this code again and we will drop directly inside the DLL. Let's see, opening it in PE Studio. We can see that this is a DLL. This is important because when .NET executables call a DLL inside of DNSpy, we can step directly into those DLLs. But if a .NET executable is calling another .NET executable, then we will have to open that second .NET executable inside of DNSpy. So since this is a DLL, we can directly step into it. We can also see that this DLL also has some detections related to it, MSIL, crypt or whatever. So let's step into it. I will press play again and then I will quickly pause. So once we paused here, we can see that there is some kind of a sleep interval going on. I will put a breakpoint at the end of the function and let it rip again. I'll try to pause it once more just to see if it's still here. Yes, still here. All right, so we are at the end of the function here. We will go ahead and step over. All right, now we can see something different. Let me close all these things which are open. We can see that dnspy has opened the android studio dll directly and it has put us in this weird character class we'll step over this over over and we can see we are in the start game method we have another array here which is sort of being loaded from a resource function which is being passed in some parameters as well. We can see that the same parameters, the same strings that we saw earlier are, we pa are being passed here. And we see something which looks like a decryption function. So Zord decrypt, a resource function is there. Now we can try to go through all this deobfuscation and you know spend our time trying to reverse engineer it or we can use or depend upon dnspy to do the heavy lifting for us. I prefer to use dnspy so I will let it rip again but in a controlled manner. So step over. So number three is being set. And now we can see that there is another array here. If we try to open this array, you'll see 4D, 5A, which means that this is another executable. Let me try to save this as well and see what is going on in this. This will be stage three dot bin. I will open up this file in PE Studio. In PE Studio, we can see that this is an executable. And virus total tells us that this may be something like Razi, Andromeda, whatever. But I know that this is the final payload for Asian Tesla. So I will open it up again. Now the, the difference here is that as this is an executable, we will have to open it up separately in P in DNSpy. We cannot let um, it run directly from uh, from this 
execution as part of this execution otherwise it will load silently in the background and it will start executing and we won't be able to analyze it so i'll stop the execution of the previous executable and i will load this new executable up in dnspy so stage three and we can see lazarus here we can also see some some basic level of obfuscation going on now remember when we saw something similar in the first executable we could see clearly entry point was you know dictionary dictionary words and normal words but here we see some obfuscation when we open up this executable as well we will see some more obfuscation here now in order to revert this obfuscation and trying to uh, get to the original payload I can use DE for dot and see if it will get me the original payload. DE for dot is an executable which is used to reverse engineer obfuscations which have been created. So let me open this. And in order to run DE for dot is very simple. I will just drag and drop stage three dot bin on top of DE for dot. And it will tell me that it has detected EAZ obfuscator.net and that a new file has been created stage 3 clean dot bin. So this file is here and now let me open this file up as well. Stage 3 cleaned dot bin. And when we open this, go to the main method. We can see now the main method is clear. It is in the new file, it is class 12.main. In the previous one, it was U006, U2000, U008. So we are making some progress in terms of deobfuscation of the final payload. I'll open up the main method. In the main method, we can see that further some more strings are in clear. I will put another breakpoint on this main method and see what else happens. This does not still look like the final payload and I can see that it is using some MS build, VBC, red serve and some other mechanisms to load different things as well. So let's try to debug this further. So start. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I will continue with pressing F10. Okay, so I think this is going into this if condition. Let me go inside this function F11 now. And then F11 again. Yeah, so it's getting the entry assembly. That's fine. All right, so we have the entry assembly. We are breaking, breaking F11 again. And something is happening here. So I can see that this byte one, which has been passed to this method, contains some string, it contains some data as well. Let me open this. And this looks like another executable. All right, so let me try to dump this as well. Or let me go further and see what happens first. What it is doing is that it is using this byte one in this method to create a process and so I highlight this new parameters. Yeah, so it's, it's basically doing some process hollowing here and it's creating a process and writing to that process memory. This whole P is being uh, overwritten. So I can try to save this and see what is in this new executable. I'll name this to stage dot bin and 
go back to the folder, try to open it again. Okay, let me close this first. Stage four. You know, we see that there is a new name and this executable, I will go to the entry point of this new executable again. And from what it looks like, I can see that there is some further obfuscation going on. This looks like the final payload of Agent Tesla. And I think this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. We will continue the analysis of Agent Tesla in the next video, where we will move forward with the string decryption and analysis of what are the artifacts it collects from the systems, etc. Thank you very much for your time and I hope to see you in the upcoming videos.